When it comes to choosing a password, people seem to have little to no imagination whatsoever, which is why I can go onto the internet here, look on Google, and see that the most common passwords are 123456, numbers, QWERTY, and the word password itself, and that's been quite common for some time. Unfortunately, due to repeated password breaches and data breaches of various websites, the hacking community has learned a lot about what people choose for passwords, and it really is very simplistic. Recently at work, I was tasked with auditing user passwords and seeing how good or bad they are, and there's some quite bad ones on there. So we're running a Windows network with NTLM hashes, which are quite bad, but this is a standard hashes that are used in Windows. We do at least have a password policy that says you must have a minimum eight characters, now a little bit more than eight characters, but it means like you can't choose one, two, three, four, five, six, and plus it had to have uppercase, lowercase, letters, numbers, which leads to people being predictable in choosing an uppercase first letter, followed by, say, six characters, followed by two numbers. Very simple. So you can't just constantly type a password, it takes too long. So what we're trying to do is crack the hash of the password. The standard way of storing a password is with hashes. So you've got MD5, SHA1, SHA512. None of these are particularly good, but changing the word that I'm putting in keeps a consistent length output. But I can't take that there and reverse engineer it to be passwd, let's get that back to password. So yeah, I can't take any of these values and reverse them into the word it was originally. But what I can try is various words over and over until I find one that when hashed matches that hash there. We can go on Google, put in hash and you might find some of them. So SHA1 reverse for that utter gibberish there. So I'll click it and we find it was successfully reversed into a string password. So that's the manual way of doing it. The fast automated way of doing it is with a program called Hashcat. Available in the standard Ubuntu repositories nowadays, and it's available in specialist tools like Kali Linux. So I have a list of hashes here. Don't necessarily know what the words are to them yet, but I have a list of them. And let's say these were extracted from an Active Directory server in Windows. These aren't the exact ones, by the way. <laughs> I'm using a similar set. And what I can do is utilize a word list to try and guess some passwords. So I could take something like the crack station list here. So that's actually quite a large file. And just looking into it, we can see various keyboard combinations. In fact, it may not have been a great one to try first off, but if I look at something like one of the English languages, so corn cob lowercase, it's just literally English words. So we can try those. And what you might find is sometimes people use their favorite books or movies as a password. So you can just download a list of movie names or book names. Yeah, there's quite a variety you can do. So let's demonstrate an attack. We're going to try a dictionary attack. So that's attack type zero. I have a hash type of 1000. Let me show you what that means. Looking at the man page, we have the hash types here. So M1000 is NTLM, NTLAMMAN. I'm going to output the results into a temporary file, temp slash res.txt. My hashes file. And I think first off, I'm just going to try the English word list. And I'm going to watch the results as they appear. Uh, so I've got a load of results already, and that's just gone through that entire word list in what? Oh, zero seconds, actually. Zero seconds. There's 3,540,000 words in that word list. It's rapid to try and crack a password. Something like the crack station word list does take a bit longer because there are that many lines. And using the same sort of syntax again, but pointing to a different word list. So I take crack station. Uh, it does take a moment to cache the file first. Oh, tell the light's already done it. So how long is it going to take to run through what is essentially a 14 gig word list? Uh, less than one minute to run through this. But we're not exactly seeing many results yet. Actually, I should have showed you how many passwords are in there. It's, it's not a huge amount, really. There's some quite long passwords here. And very basic ones. Oh, look, lots of variants of password. 
reset password. That might be a good idea to do. Make sure you do that. Oh, it's too late now, isn't it? I've got a few eight character passwords already, which I was going to show you how to brute force those. Okay, well, I've forgotten it does show you the number of passwords I have. So I have 62 cracked out of 813 in what amounts to about a minute's worth of work so far. Yeah. Maybe people have been more creative. Maybe they've made some really random passwords. Okay, so I want to do a bit of brute forcing instead. So let's say we'll go after all seven character long passwords. So hashcat, attack type three, brute force. NTLM hashes in my case. I'm going to output the results, the hashes file, and now I'm going to use a mask. So let's say we're going to go for upper lowercase digits. That's kind of a specialist mask, really. So, so we're going to have to make up a template. So I'm going to use question mark one. And I'm looking for seven characters. So seven characters, upper, lower digit. And we're going to tell hashcat that character set one equals upper, lower, or decimals. So go for it. Uh, so let's get an idea of how long this is going to take. Oh, look, we've got quite a few already flying through. But yeah, give me an idea. Oh look, six minutes or so to run through those various character sets. But how many websites and how many password policies actually allow seven characters? Well, apparently GitHub allows seven characters, so yeah. You know what would be more impressive? The eight characters. So, forget that. But eight characters might take a little bit longer. And I've still not even put in symbols yet. Look, six hours. Huh. I'm not waiting six hours. But many people are predictable. They're not going to use upper and lowercase throughout their password. Oh no. No, 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 no. What most people would probably do, uppercase for the first letter, followed by five lowercase letters, followed by two digits. So how long is that going to take to brute force this eight character password? <laughs> uh, not long at all. <laughs> Four seconds. Well, that is the danger of choosing a common character set for a password. But we don't necessarily want to brute force because brute forcing takes a long time. It's better to use a word list. But in the corporate environment, you may find users have to change their password every month or every three months. And what they may well do is just use a different number at the end. So password one, password two, password three. And if they've been there a long time, password 20, 21, etc. Happily though, there's ways of cracking those passwords in Hashcat. I don't have to specify an attack type here because I'm going to use a rule. And I'm going to use a custom rule set. And I'll show you how to write these in a future video, but I'm just going to cover the basics in this first video. And I'll use a shorter English dictionary. And again, we're finding, oh, that's done already. <laughs> Actually, well, I only got one password that time, but I may well have got a few already. <laughs> Used the wrong file name there, it's actually 4D. Append 4D, uppercase, first letter. There we go. And that's finished already. So that was a look at cracking passwords with Hashcat. I'll show you a bit more in a future video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.